Okay, so in this video, we want to go over the differences between if then statements and the case function. Before I start today, I have my uh, page right now set up on my portfolio or my blog, whatever you want to call it. I have everything set up on here. So for each video that I put out, I actually will document what was talked about, how that's applied. So if it's easier for you to actually read something and, and take a look at the documentation, because I know for a lot of the times, I find like an awesome video on YouTube and it's great and super helpful. Um, but in order to actually use it to like the use case that I need it for, for my job, I'll have a very difficult time going through the video, pausing it, trying to figure out which segment talked about what, looking in those comments, looking for people to say, skip to this part. So I think uh, for me, I wanna post the video, obviously. So if that helps you to actually watch it live, and see a use case, great. But then also I wanna link it back to just the documentation here so that you can just jump in, you watch the video, okay, cool, I get it, I understand. Now let me just get the actual details of it. So for each video, I'll have it here on my portfolio, uh, which is here, uh, it's just basically a blog site, honestly. I'll link this into the comments, uh, but there's a bunch of different stuff on here. So I have Salesforce things, business applications that I use like Zapier or DocuSign, stuff like that. I also have a podcast that I launched of FAQ around Salesforce, so common things that people are asking all the time. Um, so yeah, feel free to jump in here, check it out. There's a little bit about me, you know, some links if you want to kind of do some research there, figure out who the heck I am. Um, so yeah, there's that. Just throwing that out there. Check this out. Head on over to this place. This will have literally everything that I'm talking about, different links to everything. So. With that being said, let's jump back over to the actual video that we're trying to record right here. Um, the differences between an if then statement and a case function. Now, maybe you came across this video because you started writing a if then statement and it was so large because there were so many conditions that you hit the compile limit. Or maybe you're looking at this video because you saw something else that talked about the case function and how it's supposed to be a lot cleaner and easier to read. And if that's you, awesome, because that's what we're going to go over. And really the only reason that you would use the case function is for that. So once I figured out the case function and how much easier it was to use and how much cleaner it looked and more organized, if you're in a Salesforce environment where you have several people looking at your stuff, looking at your formulas, especially, this would be a great way to organize it so that people Whoever it is, Billy Joe jumps in and he looks at your formula. It doesn't look like this atrocious piece of garbage that he wants to just automatically log out and not look at anymore. I know I've had experiences like that, right? Where, especially depending on how people write the actual formula, you'll jump in there and sometimes it's just this large text, right? And, and sometimes I'll compile it all in one line and you're like, I don't even know what I'm reading here. So this is a way to avoid that, make it a lot more uh, clean looking. And as we go through the example, I think you'll really have a good idea of like what that looks like when you have several conditions. Um, so that's what we're gonna use it for. Once again, feel free to jump back over here um, or leave the video and head over here right now if you just wanna look at the documentation. Let's jump over to the actual use case. Um, before we begin building it, I think what would be useful is just a quick refresher on an if statement, how that works. And then uh, also to give you an example of what a case statement looks like or a case using the case function. Um, because I think it's nice to know right offhand before we go through this whole video what that looks like, right? So an if statement, if you're not super familiar with them, that's fine. Um, this is the actual definition for it and how it's used. So you're looking at a logical test if that test comes back as true, then we wanna assign a specific value. If that statement comes back as false, <clears throat> then we also wanna assign it a specific value. So our example here is based on our use case that we're gonna use. I don't know why, but I saw this um, online. People do this now. It's cool to people, I guess. So we are going to rate the behavior of these Pixar characters. Um, so they'll get either the rating of evil, meh, or good. Um, 
so that's kind of what our bas business case use case here is. Um, so what we would do if this was an if statement, right? We would say if, and I have to write out is pick val because the picks are characters filled is a pick list. So is pick val picks our characters. If this comes back as Sid, then we want it to be um, return the value of evil. If it does not come back as Sid, then we want to assign the value of blank. So as you can see right off the bat, and even without explaining this one next, you can kind of just look at it, right? And it's like, okay, there's a lot more crap in this one that I'm going to have to worry about. And that's when it's going to come into the whole thing of, is that going to be annoying for somebody to read? Is that going to be annoying when it comes to your um, compile sizes, right? Like, are you going to hit those limits? If there's a lot of conditions, this one's not a lot, I would say, but there are a few different conditions where that could get really annoying to continue to do that for each one of those, right? The case one uh, is a little bit more smaller. It's condensed, like we said. I actually wouldn't write it this way. I wrote it this way uh, just as an example, and when we build it out, I'll write it differently since we have several conditions but it's easier to read in my opinion. It's a lot easier to just look at and understand what's going on. But this would be the use case, which is you would write case, you would then grab your field, which is our Pixar characters pick list. If this pick list equals Sid, then we want it to return the value of evil. If it doesn't return Sid, then we wanna return the value of unknown. And how that works, right, is our expression, our expression, our value, our value, our result, our result. And in this case, the unknown is actually going to be this else result. So if it doesn't equal uh, Sid, anything else will just equal unknown. So that's how those two work. Quick little refresher on that. Um, you can find this piece of information really anywhere if you just Google it, like how and if you know, if function works or how a case function works, salesforce.com, and it will, you know, give you all this documentation. Salesforce has all that. You can also look at it in your formula field. I'll show you that in just a second. Um, so yeah, that's how that works. Uh, we explained our business use case here. So we kind of know what we're doing. Um, the next part of this is not Salesforce related. It's just a cool little tool that um, somebody actually showed me. And, um, really helps in a lot of these cases. So you might notice, but right off the bat, anytime that we have some type of value, it has to be surrounded in quotes like this when you put it into your formula. So sure, we could, if we wanted, just like go down the list, put quotes for each one of these, do a comma, write out another quote, say, you know, he's good, do that, and then another comma after that. We could do that. And maybe for this use case, that's not going to be horrible. But there's been times where I've had a lot more conditions than this. And it's like, I'm not going to spend 10 minutes to just like go through and put quotes around everything. That's like super annoying to do, right? Like I don't want to waste time doing that kind of stuff. So of course, there's got to be something easier out there to do. One, you could jump into Excel or I'm in Google right now. You could go to Google Sheets and use the concatenate function. Um, that does exactly what I just showed you. You can tell it to say, Here's a value, surround it with this information. Um, or what's easier than that is this place. Um, it basically just does that same thing, just a lot quicker. Like you don't have to jump into Excel. You don't have to jump into anything. You just paste your information in here and then have it do its thing. So let's actually do that. Um, I'll grab my info and I actually have these broken up for this example so it was easier to do. So all these guys are going to get the rating of good. All these guys will get evil and these two will get meh. So let's grab the good first, since we all know that these guys are gonna be good. Slap it in there. And we actually wanna say new line. If you don't know what this means, a delimiter, your delimiter is essentially asking you, when do we go and do the next thing? Like where is the breaking point? How do I know it's a new value? This is essentially what it's saying, right? So it's saying, you know, after cowboy, because there's a space, I could do spaces. Is that a new value? Would Woody be a new value? Or is it by line? In our case, it's by line, right? So we have, this is one person, 
this is one person, this is one person. So ours is gonna be by new line. That's what that means. Puts it down here for you, great. Now you have these tags. The tags essentially are going to surround these values with whatever you want. Our case, we want it to start off on this side of it. We want it to start with a quote and we want it to, or sorry, uh, yeah, a quote. And at the end, we also want it to end with quotations. On top of that, since we know that all these guys are going to be good, we also want comma right after, space, and then we also want another one that's going to say good and end that and also a comma. So that will be our ending tag. So at the end here, I also want this tacked onto it. Now all I do is click a button and bam, I have all those values, great. So I actually can come back over here and just replace those. So now those are ready to go into our formula when we're ready to do that in here in just a second. Uh, let's do that same thing with these guys. We said these guys were evil. So you actually just click your big X, slap it in there. And the only thing we got to really change here is this to evil. And move that over. Great. Have that. Let's go ahead and replace those values. Awesome. And then the last two. I could probably just write it out, but let's do that again. Boom. And let's change this from evil to, what were they? Meh. Great. So now we have all the values ready to go. That saved me, you know, X amount of time to do that, which is awesome. So these are ready to put into our value. So let's, let's jump on over into a sandbox here and build this piece of information out, which I think I have a lot of it. Let's start from the new. So. I'm going to build this out on my lead is where I want this information to be. Um, our field here, this picks our characters is built out on our lead. So I'm just going to build this also out on our lead, this behavior field. So let's click on new. Once we go to new, go to formula. Let's go to formula, behavior, rating, ratings. Let's call it that. Great, so now we have behavior ratings and we want this to be a text formula. Uh, quick little side note, this is a sweet Google extension. This is on my blog if you wanna check out the Google extensions. Um, basically, it just makes it more of like a, like a visual coder for you. So when you write out uh, formula fields and all that good stuff, it changes the colors of it, lets you know if it's an actual function. Um, a quick example would be like if I needed to write out is pick val, see how it turns blue. That lets me know like, okay, I spelt it right. It's an actual function. If I spelt this wrong, let's say I forgot the K, it'll stay black. So then you're like, okay, great. I didn't spell it right. It's not an actual formula. So if you're new to these formulas in general, um, highly recommend getting this extension. I think it's like $4.99 or something like that for a year. So it's really not that big of a deal. So I would, if you're brand new to this, you can come over here to your function section um, and actually insert that. So you could leave this up here and let's just line down a little bit so we have some room. And let's leave this top example up there so we know kind of how to build this out. So I'm just gonna copy it. So case, great, now we need our expression. Let's click on insert fields, go to, uh, what was it called, Pixar characters, insert. Great, so now we have our expression. It says to do a comma, so let's do a comma. And I could continue on the same line, but I want it to space out a little bit so I can read this a little bit easier, have some more organization around it. So the next part is going to be the value. So let's go on over here to our value and let's grab what those were. We have all these actually ready to go. So we just really need to copy this and paste it in here and we're good to go so we already did that right we have the actual value which is here so if it's cowboy woody then what do we want the result to be we want it to be good move on to the next one if it's buzz we want it to be good if it's rex we want it to be good if it's andy we want it to be meh if it's zerg we want it to be evil right so all those are actually ready to go so that was easy now and uh, for the sake of the actual formula, let's just take those spaces out. Um, I like to space down one more specifically because if I were reading this and I didn't know what was going on, I could easily see like, 
okay, great. So here's all these values. Return this type of value if it's this. Return this type of value if it's this. And then I space down one more and actually just do a quote for what we want it to be if it's not a value in there. So if we have uh, whoever it is, you know, Wally or whatever his name is, Flick, uh, somebody like that, right? Uh, they're not on this list. We just want it to actually return unknown because we don't know enough about them. Um, and I think that's it, right? So there's nothing up here. It doesn't say to put a comma. So I think we're good. And we just uh, end it off with another parenthesis. Another shout out to this cool little Google extension. See if I highlight it, it actually, or if I just move my cursor on it, I'm just pushing the left arrow. If I go over, it actually highlights it to say where that pairs up with the other uh, parenthesis, which is nice. So if you're using a lot of parentheses, you can see, did I put enough in there to actually end this uh, specific formula? And yeah, that's that's cool. Um, so I would probably also do, uh, I'd probably leave it like this. This looks good to me. Let's erase that top piece. And there you go, right? And check our syntax. Great, we didn't get any errors. And this is where this pops up, right? Your compiled size. So 625 characters are in there. We're not really running on anything, but uh, if I needed to, you know, I could take out some spaces, whatever it was. For this example, it's a lot cleaner looking to me because I can now say, cool, I built this formula. Billy Joe gets in here. Okay, you used a case function. You're looking at this specific field, the Pixar characters. If it's Woody, good. If it's Andy, meh. If it's Ham, it's evil. If it's not any of those, it's going to be unknown. And then that's the end of the formula. Um, I'm not gonna do it here, but just make sure you always fill out these descriptions and help text if this is actual real life, because that gets really annoying when you build these out and nobody knows what the heck the field is. Um, so put those in there. You would then hit next, well, yeah, whatever. Let's just make this visible for everybody. It's just a test, save it, great. So now we have this thing in there called, I think we called it the behavior ratings, okay. So let's actually jump over to an example. Let's refresh the page now that we have a new field and let's look for that. So we have the behavior ratings, it's unknown, um, which is great, right? Because we don't actually, have anything in our Pixar characters, I don't believe. We don't, it's actually empty. So we didn't include to say, what if it's blank? If we want it to be a different value, if the Pixar characters is blank, we could do that. And in this case, since we have no idea who the Pixar character is, it makes sense to me to leave this as unknown because I don't even know who the character is. So I can't tell you the behavior rating. If I change this though um, to Andy, this should hopefully put it as meh which it did, so that's working. If I put it as Sid, it should return it as evil. Great, and let's test, oh, whoops, didn't mean to hit edit. And then let's actually test a good character, uh, Buzz. Okay, great, and Buzz is good. Um, and then the last person, the only person we didn't include in here was this, I don't know their names, but the alien thing, yeah. So if we put him in here, Okay, and it comes back as unknown because we don't know what his behavior is. So it's working. That's exactly how this whole function will work. Um, you know, once again, if you look back at our specific formula here, I mean, that's how clean this thing looks now. So very tidied up. Um, looks very clean for somebody to just jump in there and do that. So more or less, that's how this works. And once again, like I said at the beginning of the video, feel free to jump over to the blog site and look at the documentation of this. I'll have this all here once it's published so that you can just take a look at the use case.